Hey, this is Jason Johnson, Instructional Designer at the University of Kentucky College of Social Work. And today we're going to talk about analytics in Canvas. Our learning objectives today, the three main purposes of the Canvas course analytics, how to access, read, and use the available information, and what exactly can an instructor track in Canvas. So first, the three main purposes of Canvas analytics. They are for justification, intervention, and learning. And these points are taken from the instructor guides. So the first, justification. We use the analytics as system reports. How is Canvas being used? Is it being used and accessed? Second, for intervention. In this way, we can predict at-risk students and how to meet their needs. Did you know that a participation in an early online discussion can be a predictor of student success? And third, it's for learning. To question, are the students learning? What is the time use between competent and non-competent students? Are the activities working? Are the students actually doing them? Are they accessing the pages? Now we'll look at a demo in Canvas on how to access and use the analytics. These will be in four main sections. In this demo, I'll be using a couple of different demo courses in order to keep the anonymity of the students and so that we're not revealing any personal information here. Uh, the one that you'll see is my How to Be a Superhero course that, uh, that will look at some of the more specific student information. And then another one, just a, a random course to look at some wider information there, looking at a course with a lot more students in it. So in order to view the course analytics, it's from the Home tab. On the right-hand side over here, there's a button that says View Course Analytics. Note that viewing analytics in Canvas is a course permission, meaning that unless you are a teacher, you're not going to be able to view the analytics. And also, administrators could also restrict the ability for teachers to view course analytics. First section is Activity, which allows the instructor to see when students view a page or participate in the course. Once we come onto this page, we'll see up the top activity by date, submissions, and grades. I'm going to flip over to my other demo course in order to show you these three things. You can see up here at the top, this first horizontal bar here is activity by date. If you mouse over the different bars, you can see a little more information about those bars. The lighter ones are page views only. This is just the students viewing pages. Anytime there's a darker bar, it indicates that a user, a student, took an action. And you can see what kind of participations or how many participations took place on those days. This is a good way to kind of see even the overall course and how students have interacted with the course over time. Or to look back on a previous week to see if students have been involved. Second section is submissions. This allows the instructor to view if the students submit the assignment on time, late, or not at all. In the second horizontal section, we have the submissions. These are assignments that the students have submitted. Each one of these bars represents an assignment. The green, of course, are on time. Yellow, late, missing would be in the red. If we mouse over, we can see a little more information about each one of those. The third is grades. Canvas uses a box and whisker plot to show the distribution of grades in the course. The one strange thing about this is that it uses a grading scale on the left. That's not going to be the same for every assignment, obviously. So they basically just set this points to the maximum points that have been given or above the maximum that has been given for any assignment. And so these aren't really going to be equal to one another. They're intended to be looked at more individually. So you can see as you mouse over each one of those points of data, you get a little bit more information. Essentially, the thin vertical whisker extends from the lowest score for any student in the course to the highest score. Then the thicker bar extends from the 25th percentile to the 75th, with the median marked in that bar. And the fourth and final section is student analytics. In this, we're able to see page views, participations, assignments, and current scores for every student in the course. Now, in order to get a little more information about the students themselves, I'll flip back over to my other demo 
course, and I'll flip down here to look at our students. One great aspect here is that you can sort the students by a number of variables, by student, page views, participations, or by the current score. And then you're able to basically click on an individual student's name and to be able to get more of a granular idea of what that student has done in terms of participation. So if you are looking here across, you can see that Bruce Banner down here at the bottom had a number of page views, participations. However, his current score is pretty low. So we may want to look in on Bruce Banner to see what is going on. This would be the intervention step of using this data. So let's click on Bruce Banner. Once Bruce Banner's information comes up here, we're able to see a number of things. First, activity by date shows him when he has done participations as well as just simple page views. Any communications with the instructor. And then submissions. So we can see here that despite Bruce Banner's low grades, it's not because he's been handing things in late. For the most part, he has handed them in on time and uh, with all the green submissions there in terms of on time. But we can see down here on the grades, again, another box and whisker chart where each bar represents one assignment. The thin whisker extends from the lowest score, again, for any student in the course, to the highest score. The thicker bar then extends from the 25th percentile again to the 75th with the median marked. And then the student's score is marked with a dot or a second box. As with the other page, we can flip back and forth between the graphical view to a table view and get a little more specific information from there, any of the data that essentially drives the graphical representation, as well as switch from student to student if we wish from here. Now if we go back to our Canvas course here and down to settings, there's a little more information you can get from Canvas that is not directly linked in with the analytics. One is course statistics, we can click on right there and see any kind of running totals as well as assignments, recently logged in users, and see how your file storage is doing. We can also go back over here to people and we can click on individual students if we want to from this tab. So we want to look at Bruce Banner's total activity. And we can now click over here on the right, click on Interactions Report with Bruce Banner. We can click on back to where we were before with Analytics, or we can click on Access Report. This Access Report then gives us much more detail even than the Analytics does in terms of where exactly Bruce Banner was during the time that he was online, how many times he participated, times viewed, when the last view was. This can be very helpful when a student says that they submitted something in, but you don't find it there, or you are talking to them about their grades and it's hard to understand exactly why they're getting the grades that they're getting. This, this could be somewhat helpful in order to see what kind of activity and what kind of effort really the student put into the course. Note that currently, analytics does not measure activity on mobile devices. So keep this in mind as you're looking at your student activity. Here are some resources that I used for this presentation. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments.